Well, welcome back, Bio Kids. This is Diffusion, Osmosis, and Active Transport by Lev. This is my third attempt at getting this thing down. Hopefully, it's going to work for us now. We're going to begin with a short video that looks at the process of diffusion. Diffusion. Molecules dissolved in a solution are in constant random motion due to their kinetic energy. One result of this motion is that dissolved molecules become evenly distributed throughout the solution. This tendency of molecules to spread out is an example of diffusion. But how do these molecules come to be evenly distributed? Let's start with a beaker of plain water. What will happen if we now add a lump of sugar to the water? A lump of sugar is composed of many individual sugar molecules, and even as a solid lump, the individual sugar molecules are in motion. When the lump is dropped into the water, it begins to dissolve. Individual sugar molecules move randomly and constantly from the area where they are common to the area where they are scarce. This type of motion, when molecules move from areas of their higher concentration to areas of their lower concentration, is called diffusion. Diffusion continues until all the sugar molecules become evenly dispersed throughout the beaker. The rate of diffusion is affected by temperature, size of molecules, and the steepness of the concentration gradient. Although not specifically shown in this animation, this is one of the processes whereby materials are exchanged between a cell and its environment. Okay, so what's the bottom line? Well, if we were to look at diffusion, we can say that diffusion moves molecules from a high concentration to a low concentration and it's free. When this is occurring across a cell membrane, we describe it as passive transport. Let's take a look at passive transport, passive transport. We'll take a look at our eukaryotic cell here. You can see the nucleus in the middle and the lipid bilayer on the outside. And I'd like to begin with the gas on the outside of the membrane. Notice the oxygen gas on the right side and the red arrow. We have a high concentration of oxygen on the right side and a low concentration of oxygen in the cell. The oxygen will freely diffuse across the cell membrane from a high concentration to a low concentration. Oxygen is a small molecule and it will squeeze between the lipids that make up the lipid bilayer. Here the gas is moving from a high concentration to a low concentration, and that movement costs the cell no energy. Similarly, look at the carbon dioxide on the left side that's inside of the cell. These carbon dioxide molecules will be vibrating about, and they will cross the cell membrane from a high concentration to a low concentration. Here, that means that these molecules will travel from inside the cell to outside the cell. This type of molecular movement will occur until equilibrium is reached. When equilibrium is reached, there is an equal concentration of oxygen inside the cell as there is outside the cell, an equal co concentration of carbon dioxide inside the cell as outside the cell. Now let's look at a special case of diffusion. Notice the blue arrow at the bottom and the water inside of the cell. Here water exists at a high concentration inside of the cell and a low concentration outside of the cell. The water molecules will diffuse across the cell membrane, but because water is diffusing across the cell membrane, it is doing this by osmosis. In osmosis, water moves from a high concentration 
to a low concentration following the concentration gradient. We use the word osmosis only for the diffusion of water traveling across a semi-permeable membrane. The water molecules will diffuse by osmosis until equilibrium is reached. So to summarize, osmosis is the diffusion of water. And water will always move from a high concentration to a low concentration. Now let's look at the last case in our cell. Notice the hexagonal structures on the left. These are representing the sugar glucose. Glucose is a big molecule and when it attempts to cross the membrane, it cannot get through. Yet we have a high concentration of glucose outside of the cell and a low concentration of glucose inside the cell. The cell needs the glucose because glucose is energy for the cell. This glucose can move across the cell membrane by a process called facilitated diffusion. In facilitated diffusion, protein channels and transport proteins will move big molecules from a high concentration to a low concentration. So to summarize, big molecules can be transported using diffusion from a high concentration to a low concentration by the process called facilitated diffusion. Diffusion is an example of passive transport. Consider the analogy displayed in front of you. There is a ball on top of the hill and a person getting ready to push the ball. The ball will travel from up the hill, down the hill, and no energy will be required to move that ball downhill. This is just like passive transport. Diffusion requires no energy investment by the cell. Molecules will move from a high concentration to a low concentration on their own. If the molecules are large, they will use protein channels. And if the molecule is water that is diffusing across the membrane, we call it osmosis. The diagram here illustrates the diffusion of a gas across the lipid bilayer. Note the purple balls above the cell. There are many there. They're going to travel downhill following the concentration gradient from a high concentration to a low concentration. The last two diagrams are illustrating facilitated diffusion as large molecules are either traveling down a protein channel or a transport protein following their concentration gradient. What happens when we need to move molecules from a low concentration to a high concentration? This would be like moving the ball uphill. In contrast to what we were talking about before, we need to invest energy here in order to move the ball uphill. The investment of energy is called active transport. 
Active transport requires energy and is not free. In active transport, we move molecules from a low concentration to a high concentration. Consider the cell diagram like the one we looked at before. In this case, we have a high concentration of sodium ion outside the cell and a low concentration of sodium ions inside the cell. Your cell requires a specific sodium ion balance, and sometimes the cell will need to transport those molecules out. Diffusion will cause the sodium ions to move into the cell. But if the concentration of sodium inside the cell gets too high, then the cell will die. The cell can invest energy in the form of ATP to transport that sodium from a low concentration to a high concentration. This process is called active transport. The final diagram that I have to share with you is one of a cell membrane with a transport protein. Active transport requires proteins that are charged by ATP, which is energy. In this diagram, you can see two diamonds in the blue section outside of the cell, and you can see five diamonds inside of the cell. The cell requires these molecules, and we need to move them from a low concentration outside of the cell to a high concentration inside of the cell. Here, ATP is used in the form of energy to transport those molecules through a protein pump from a low concentration to a high concentration, and we call this active transport. And now, I'm done, and you can take your quiz.